Hello children, welcome to story time with Miss Nidhi. Today I have a very exciting story about a young girl who loved reading rocks. She could read rocks like books. Yes, you heard me right. Let me share with you the title of today's story and that is Sudipta Sen Gupta, the Rock Reader. So today we are going to read this exciting story about Sudipta, who was a rock reader. I'm not sure if you heard about somebody who read rocks, but today you will learn about rock readers from this story. The author of this story is Dina Prasad. Illustrations are done by Manjari Chakravarti. This book has been published by Pratham Books. So let's get started and learn more about Sudipta and how did she read rocks like books. When Sudipta sits to do maths with Baba, her mind wanders to the mountains. She dreams of climbing over rocks and boulders, scaling snow-capped peaks. She dreams of being a mountaineer. Soon, Sudipta's school days are over and she applies for a physics course in college. There, she meets a professor who suggests that she study geology instead. Children, do you have an idea? What does a geologist does? No? Let me share with you. A geologist studies rocks and how they are formed. During the course of her studies, Sudipta collects rock samples. She goes exploring and trekking. She scales mountains and she travels to far and secluded places. She studies rocks from all corners of the world. She wants to understand how Earth's forces can cause deformation in rocks. So Dipta continues to study for a long time, even after she completes college. Soon she can read a rock like a book. She can tell whether it was involved in an earthquake or was a part of a mountain. She continues climbing mountains. She is given advanced training by Tenzing Norge, one of the first two men who scaled the mighty Everest. Deep inside Earth, there is a lot of heat and pressure which makes rocks soft. They can deform, which means they can change shape. Closer to the surface, the pressure is less. Here, the rocks can crack. Sometimes, one rock goes through the impact of different forces and periods of time. So it changes shape multiple times. So Dipta's search for rocks takes her on the wildest adventures in the remotest places. Once when she's climbing bridges at Singh Tham, a place known for its wild elephant, her guide shouts, Elephant! Elephant! Run! 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 With a rucksack of rocks, Sudipta runs as fast and as far as her feet can take her. But are there any elephants? No, all she sees are footprints of wild boar and deer. Another time, she is on an expedition to the Scandinavian Caledonian Range. It's dusk and she is on a narrow cliff when suddenly fog sets in. It's so thick. She can't even see her own hands. She stands frozen for an hour, even the slightest movement and she might fall off the cliff. The next day, she is walking across a lush green valley. So Dipta begins to sink. This isn't grass, it's a bog. She gathers all her strength, pulls herself out of the bog and makes it back to the camp. So Dipta hears that there is going to be an expedition to the coldest place in the world, Antarctica. She can't wait to apply, but the expedition is not open to female scientists. A year later, much to her surprise, she gets a telegram calling her for an interview. And the next thing she knows, she is setting sail from Goa to Antarctica. The only other woman scientist on board is Aditi Pant a marine biologist. 
according to the antarctic treaty antarctica is a natural reserve devoted to peace and science all countries that have stations there pledge to conduct research only for peaceful and earth friendly purposes they also share their findings freely with scientists from other countries 23 days after setting sail from goa the fin polaris docks at antarctica on board are 83 people which included scientists engineers and officers from the armed forces they will set up india's first research station dakshin gangotri however the station was abandoned after it was submerged in ice in the late 1980s from the deck sudipta can see miles and miles of blue and white no trees no plants no animals no people and guess what only penguins on 27 december 1983 sudipta and aditi became the first indian women scientists to set foot on the icy continent do you know children 90% of the world's ice is located in the antarctic Looking for rock samples in Antarctica is not easy, so Ditta always leaves the research station with her clinometer, a special compass that not only shows her the direction but also the incline of the rock. She doesn't know when the ice and rock bridges she's walking on will break or when the snow will give way to a crevice. Blast of dry chilly wind. hit her face as she walks on sheets of ice that are 4 km thick she cannot spot any rocks where will she find them on top of the mountains in antarctica there are mountain peaks that just out of the ice so dipta steals these peaks for her samples and finds almost 20 kg of rocks which she carries in her rucksack she spends long hours hammering away at fresh and hard rocks it is so cold she can't even take off the cap of her pen to take field notes do you know children in antarctic the temperature in summers can range between minus 20 to minus 30 degree celsius and in winter it can go as low as minus 89 degree celsius can you imagine how cold it gets there Sudipta collects lots of rocks in Antarctica big rocks small rocks rocks with sharp edges rocks with lines running across them she can trace their history back a million years ago some of the rocks have deep formation patterns similar to the rocks in south africa and some have patterns like the ones in south india scientists say tens of millions of years ago the continents of asia Africa, Australia, South America and Antarctica were joined together to form one huge land mass called Gondwana land 20 million years ago it split and began to drift apart to form separate continents Antarctica settled in the south pole so the tar returns to Antarctica a few years later Again she walks for miles on ice, treks across mountains, discovers new rocks. She watches, she listens, she writes, and she brings back stories on how the world came to be. Let me share a little more about Sudipta with all of you. Sudipta completed her graduation and post graduation in applied geology. She continued her PhD research in structural geology at Jadavpur University. So that she was selected to conduct her postdoctoral research at the Imperial College of Science which is in London. As of year 2018, she is the only Indian geologist to have received this fellowship. Sudipta pioneered geological study in the Shirmachar Hills in East Antarctica. Many other scientists continued the work she started here. 
Some awards she has received are the Shanti Swaroop Patnakar Award in the year 1991, the Antarctic Award in the year 2000, and the DN Bardia Medal in the year 2016. Sudipta is a former professor and INSA senior scientist at the Department of Geological Sciences at Jadavpur University in Kolkata.